It's Mr. Jam on Capital Dance, and right now I am joined by the artist behind this week's Jam Hot Record of the Week. You, you've also brought a very small entourage with you, so studio crew, make some noise for Charlie Boone! <laughs> Let's go. Welcome to Capital, Charlie. How are you, man? Yeah, very good, thank you. Um, a bit tired. I was playing in Aberdeen on Sunday. Wow. So I'm just kind of getting back into the week a bit, but yeah. Good. How was Aberdeen? It's one of my favourite places to play. It's like everyone has got such a good vibe, so high energy. I played a day party and then they were like, do you want to come and play the afters? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and it was actually Interplanetary Criminal playing. Really? And then I ended up playing after in this like thousand cap tunnel and it was yeah, mad. <laughs> I was playing beastie garage tracks. <laughs> and then I was like, looked at my phone, it was like four o'clock on Monday morning. I was like, okay, it's a bank holiday, but I should go to bed. Oh yeah. <laughs> but also, yes, yeah. yes please, I will go and play those afters. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> 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 so what kind of music were you dropping? What kind of beastie, like beastie carriage? Because that's not what you made. No, no, no. I mean, I just, I love anything that's high energy. So just mm. those like bassline garage edits I've got in my in my folder just to go alongside the like trancey high, high any, anything high energy I pretty much am into. It doesn't have to be this like trancey sound. It's like speed garage, like faster house, hard house, anything really. That's just make me bounce around. <laughs> That's See, what I love. Do you know what? That's hilarious because if anybody were to push me to say what is the Charlie Boone sound, I would say energy. Yeah, yeah, that is it. I'm like, pe people are always like, oh, you don't like stick into like one sound. Like, but I'm like, but if you listen to every single tune I do, it's always really, really high energy. <laughs> and it's like, my last tune I released uh, um, like two or three months ago before my life was like, 128, I think, and then this tune's 150, but there's a recurring theme, it's high energy. <laughs> I just, yeah, if I can bounce around to it, it's just, yeah, it's fine. I love that. I love that. Please, can we have more of that in dance music? Less less boxes, more just energy. Yeah, yeah, because I don't like, when I DJ, I don't like staying in a particular genre. Like I was just saying, it's like, I like to move between the thing but there is one thing that you can keep the same and it is that just like yeah. if it's a piano if it's a bass line it's just like keep the vibes up keep everyone moving I think I'm just really scared of people stopping dancing so I have to be high energy <laughs> you know when people play like those like records that just like <laughs> calm the floor down I'm like oh, God, I can't really do it I get too anxious I'm like everyone hates being here <laughs> yeah, as, soon as, as soon as it looks like people are leaving the dance floor quick quick pitch it up let's go come yeah. on you see a few people scrolling on your phones, you're like, oh no, I've flopped it. <laughs> They're going to post and say, yeah. how terrible. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest fear. Oh, going yeah. on X and being like, oh no, <laughs> I'm cancelled. <laughs> Don't go on X. No, no. Don't do it. I know, but I like reading about like football and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not, well, the not the only way that I do it now is that there's so many muted words that I have to mute on my timeline <laughs> just so I can actually have some sort of random, decent experience. Yeah, yeah. I think the only one I um, stopped was Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't deal with that anymore. <laughs> but I got a text! Someone's coming up! I don't care! I got a text! <laughs> Tonight! <laughs> I didn't expect you to come out with the impressions. <laughs> yes, Charlie. On Capital Dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the problem with Mr. Jam. <laughs> Sorry, Ian Sterling. <laughs> oh, that was a pretty decent Ian Sterling. I, I, I think you would be very happy with that. Uh, let's talk about the record that you're here with now. So, All My Life is, is this week's uh, Jam Hot Record of the Week. Yeah, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. The moment that we heard it, we fell in love with it as a team. You know, it's a full team that make decisions about music on the station, and that was one where it was a rare one when everybody liked it. There was nobody sat around the table going, hmm, I'm not too sure. <laughs> everybody really liked that tune. Talk to me about the process of making that one. Um, so I was actually sat in the kitchen last summer, quite a while ago, with uh, back in Cornwall at my parents' house. And my dad used to own a nightclub. And we were just talking about those kind of times, this like era. So it was like, I don't know, maybe 2001 or something. And we were talking about those times. And I was kind of just inspired by what he was talking about, about these like trancey sounds and all of like what he was into back then. And I just started like making the bass line and just, yeah, I was just... Ha and then I think I might have heard the um, Avicii record on the radio previously, a few weeks before. And it was in my head, and then I was just like, you know what? I might try and, I might try and work that in, and it just kind of came together. And I was wow. like, wow! And then the piano happened, and I was like, and then literally a couple of days later, I played it at Ballmasters Festival, and I was like, wow! We've got to try and release this record. Um, and yeah, it's been a really long process, but yeah, we it's, it's here and. I'm so buzzing that it's finally out. Listen, it's a long process, but with good reason because you know it's the first time anything Avicii has been cleared for sample usage. Yeah, it's, yeah. at all. Yeah, it's um, 
How does that feel for you? I mean, it's an absolute honour. Like, he was one of the first artists that I heard making dance music back in the day. And, yeah, it just feels, yeah, like such a privilege to be able to use that um, record and hopefully I've done it justice. I think you have. I yeah. think you've done, I think you've done more than you've done it more than justice. Honestly, I mean, you say you played it at Boardmasters, and that was the point where you were like, "We need to get this released." What's been the reaction when you've been playing it out? Oh, it's crazy because a lot of the kids that you play to now, the eighteen-year-olds, probably haven't heard that Avicii record before. Yeah, but you play it, and then they're kind of like, "Oh yeah, I can get along." And then by the time that oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you punch in the microphone in the light, by the time that comes around, you're like. The, the second to so the breakdown, everyone's singing it back to you. And I'm like, wow. Like, so you get the first drop where the older people in the crowd sing it back to you. And you're like, okay, they know it, they know it. And then by the second drop, everyone's singing it back. And then it just comes in and I'm just like, I've, I've, I mean, still now, every time I play it, I have massive goosebumps. And it just, yeah, it just feels, feels really special to me. Charlie, you mentioned it earlier on, but we have to spend a little bit more time talking about this because, you know, <laughs> your dad owning a club, that is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I... <sighs> I don't remember too much from those early years. Like, I think it was until I was like five or six, but there's some really good stories about basically we used to, when we first moved to Cornwall, <laughs> there was a flat above the nightclub. And the reason we moved to Cornwall was for the nightclub and there was a flat above it. And <laughs> my dad said that he used to have to take the baby monitor downstairs sometimes. <laughs> and I'd be in my cot upstairs and he'd be like pulling pints in the bar, like making sure, like making sure everything. And he had the baby monitor with him, <laughs> checking that I was all right. And he said once he came up and I was in the um, in my cot and you could like kind of hear the bass coming through the floorboards and I was like in my cot like bouncing to it and he was like, I think we should probably move out the flat now. <laughs> <laughs> the damage was already done. You were already bitten by the music yeah, bug. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's kind of ingrained in me from then. I think maybe like the, the smoke machine coming through the floorboards wasn't ideal. <laughs> but... We'll, we'll, we'll move, we'll move. <laughs> it hasn't harmed your lung function, it's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, my parents are good parents, by the way. No heat on them. It's all down to my dad that I'm doing this. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, your dad teaching you to DJ yeah. on the family decks. Oh. Like, well, what? Yeah, well, teach him. Sorry, Dad, if you're listening. Uh, but, yeah, he taught me, but he, he basically used to headline the nightclub a lot of Saturday nights. Yeah. And he, his, his motto is, uh, I wasn't the best at beat matching, but my tune selection was bang on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, when, I, when, I got my, when I got his 1210s, I was like, right, Dad, what do I do? And I think it had been about 10 years since he'd probably last done it in a club. And he was like, right. And I, he like clang, clanged a transition. And I was like, I think I might have to go on YouTube or something. To be honest. <laughs> no, but he's, yeah, he has got a good tune selection. But um, I, yeah, self-talk. How many, how many of his tunes have made it into your current record box? I think there's, um, I think York on the Beach, like that, that is one that was, is still from that record collection that I was like, I remember trolling through it and there was loads of good like Groove Armada and like loads of like these old school banging records, but like York on the Beach is probably one that was like in there from those early days. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that but this is the thing as well like you know the music that you make is high energy you were raised on high energy music you you, you know at bouncing in your club at bouncing in your car above a club as a small baby this has all been destined for you man yeah yeah it does feel like that sometimes i like <laughs> i flirted with um doing other jobs and i was like i don't like it at all mm -hmm. i was like this is this is what i love doing i like like standing on a well in a club and djing to a crowd of people and just connecting with an audience is where i feel like I'm in a flow state, probably. I think you can, you know, you know that feeling when you're just, it's going well. Yeah. Everyone's loving it. It's like, I don't think there's much better than that. Like, and to do it as a job is, it's a joke, really. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that try and do it, but they don't have the music in them. And yeah. this is the thing that when people ask me, what's, what's the best tip that you can give to an up and coming DJ? You have to love the music. You yeah. have to have the love and passion that you have for the music. Otherwise, there's no point. Yeah. Yeah. I can completely agree. Um, when people ask for advice, I'm like, just, just, just really enjoy it and like do what you actually love because mm. you can't force it. You can't just be like, oh, it looks quite fun being a DJ because like you just get to play to loads of people and people think you're cool. But really, you've got to have that deep passion because if it, you don't have that deep passion, it, like it doesn't shine through in your productions or when you're DJing. So that'd be my biggest take out from it. I love that. I love that. Uh, we we spoke about it off air, but we need to talk about you DJing on a plane because <laughs> man, man. Yeah, I mean. I think... Not only were you playing at Snowbox Festival, but you're playing on the plane on the way to Snowbox Festival. <laughs> yeah. That's a big deal. Oh, it was um, it was kind of a dream for me. I'm I'm a bit of an aviation nerd. Yeah. So I was like, 
I was quite scared of flying. And then I, I, in my algorithm on my phone about three or four years ago, it became like planes landing. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, Please I'm tell really... me that you watch Big Jet TV. Mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, li I, I watch it too. I went for a stage of like not being able to turn it off if it was on. So I'd be like in my studio making tunes. And Jerry would be in the background and he'd be like, oh, yeah, there's an A380. And I'll be like, oh, this is so good. And I couldn't turn it off. So I was like thinking about like maybe sampling or something, but I thought it was a bit niche. But <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not niche. No, no, it's not niche. I mean, like you go on now and there's like 20,000 people. You're like, I was here from the start, yeah. mate. <laughs> I've been here when there's like 400 people here. <laughs> Who are all you people? <laughs> but yeah, I was when they. I think um, the festival kind of knew. My manager told them that I like planes before somehow, and um, yeah, they were like they linked me with the brand that was. They were basically hiring a plane to go up to the festival, and yeah, it was like probably one of the best days of my life because I love planes. And the captain thought I was like, he thought I was cool, and I thought he was cool. So we were just like <laughs> best mates. <laughs> but I. Uh, after, after it all happened, I was like, oh, can I come and sit in the cockpit? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And I, like, came into the cockpit, like, oh, I was, like, going to sit in a seat. I came in and just went, douche, whack my head on the thing. No. Yeah, and I was, like, I was pretty spun out, to be honest. I was, like, pretended I was fine. I got off and I was, like, I had blood on my head. I was, like, oh, no. no. I think he thought I was not very cool after that. Well, I think that what he realised is that you're quite tall. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was, like, 6'4 or something. I was, like, I'm six foot. Yeah, but he's been down. How long has he been flying planes? He knows to duck down. I know, I know. It was his fault for not telling you to duck down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's when I realised I definitely can't be a pilot. I've always had it as a bit of a pipe dream fallback, but I mean, I'm too bad at maths. You're saying that, you're saying that, but on our sister station, Capital, there's a presenter called Will Manning, yep. who does the official Big Top 40. He's also a qualified pilot. <sighs> That's the dream. He's also, he's done his hours. He's a qualified pilot. He, he did it as like his... his no way. Yeah. He did it as like a hobby, but now he will fly people to like his friends for the weekend to Spain. That's so good. When he gets DJ gigs, he can fly himself to his DJ oh, that is the Can you link me with him? I will link you. Please, just to go up. <laughs> we could get a viral video from it or something, surely. I will definitely yes. link you. Yes, it let's has do to it. Happen. Will Manning, let's do it. We'll make it happen. Let's fly. We'll <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get him to take you to one of your sets. Wow. Over the summer? That is a great shout. What are you doing? What are you, you're busy over the summer, right? Oh, yeah, I've got loads of shows coming up. Um, oh, I'm so excited. I'm supporting Fatboy Slim next month. Nice. Yeah, that's like a big dream for me. And it's actually at this place called... Do you know the Eden Project? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So they do these Eden sessions thing. And I remember when I was a kid, I watched the Kooks there and they threw the guitar pick out and I caught it. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and I remember like from that sort of time, I was like... I think I just want to be a musician. And I didn't kind of, hadn't quite worked out, like, obviously my dad and the nightclub thing, I couldn't work out what I wanted to do, but, like, to be back there and playing there is like, oh, I don't know, it just feels like a bit of, like, a mad full circle moment. And with Norman as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw a video of him playing, like, I think his own edit of one of my previous tunes, We Back, and then, yeah, I was like, oh, he knows, he knows that. And, yeah, <laughs> it happened. Norman Cook, like, fat boy slim, me supporting, <laughs> just me. It doesn't feel right, but it kind of does at the same time. It does feel right. It does feel right. It was written in the stars and written by a plane in the stars. <laughs> Are we going to get any more music from you soon? Yes, yes. Um, I've got an EP coming out next month uh, on... I don't know, my last set. Dan Shake. Do you know Dan Shake's label? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, on Dan Shake's label. A couple of little club tours and then lots more throughout the year. That, yeah. Well, we're very, very excited to hear more from you, man. Until then, all my life is doing the business. Charlie Boone, please don't be a stranger, man. Mate, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate all the support. Studio crew, make some noise for Charlie Boone, please. Woo!